go ahead and open up the file which is called Design a CPU to Assembler. So whenever you open that up, you should have this Excel spreadsheet here. Now, I'll get rid of my image here first of all. Now note that we have a few different uh, sheets here. So the one that we're interested in is the one, the first one we're on at the moment, it's called Debugger. There are some other sheets here. There's an output in hex and there's some sample code as well. And there's also the instruction set. And this is the instruction set here and also a little image of the top level. So this page is, comes in handy to remind us how to write the code. But the main page we're interested in here is debugger. Now in order to control this page here, we have these buttons at the top left hand side. So we can clear out what's here at the moment if you just press the clear button. So that should clear everything out. Now the reason for writing this debugger and the assembler is, well first of all we need to be able to assemble the code. That is we need to be able to write the code in the assembly language and then convert it to machine code and that's done with the assembler. But we also want to be able to write the code here and simulate it on the Excel spreadsheet. The reason for doing this is that it would take a long time to write the code and then load it into the CPU. And if there was a problem with the code, then we would have to try and work it out via the CPU. So we would, we would be continually running the CPU simulations over and over again. And it's very inefficient. It's a very inefficient way of writing our code. It's much better to actually write the code here in the little simulator, because in, in effect, what this is, it, it simulates the actual CPU. So it's much easier to write it in here and debug it in here. And once we've got it running the way we want to, we can then output it, that is export it, into a file which we can load into the CPU. So let's go ahead first of all and we'll write a little bit of code, really some something really simple, and then we'll see exactly how we're able to debug that. So we're going to write a code that just adds two numbers together. So in order to add a, your code in, your code gets added in in these four columns here. So that's column B, C, D and E. So the op code goes here and then the register R, A, R, B and also the uh, data byte goes here. So this is where we write all of our assembly language. So if we want to add two numbers, we have to add a number into a register. So we'll add the use the data command and we're going to put the number into first number into register R0 and we'll just put the number 1 in. So that's going to be the binary for 1. So this here is our first line of code. So then we're going to add a number into another register. So we'll add the number into register R1. And again, we'll just add 1. And I suggest that you open this up and you can work along this with me. So this should put R, put 1 into register R0 and it should put 1 into register R1. Now what we want to do is add the two numbers together. So we use the add command and we had add R0, R1. So what this does is it adds R0 and R1 and it puts the result in R1. So we should end up with the number 2 in R1. Now in order for the program to end properly, we can put the end command. Now we don't actually need that there, but this end command will actually stop the CPU. If we don't put it there, then the CPU will just continually run. So now what we want to do is we want to assemble that. So that is, we want to take this code here and we want to the assembly language and we want to create the machine code. So if you press the assemble button here, you'll see that 
this column here has now been populated. So this is the RAM. So each element here is the a memory location in the RAM. So there's going to be 256 values that you could potentially put in this column. Each one of them will map into the RAM location 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Now you can see what's happened here whenever we've assembled this. The data R0 has got an op code. So this is the op code here for the data R0. And then we have the number 1. So this is the number 1. We therefore again have the data, the op code for data R1. So the op code for data R1 is this one here. And then we have the data, which is a value of 1 again. And then we have the add instruction, so add R0, R1, and the code for that is this line here. And finally, we have the end command. The code for the end command is this here. So you can see that our assembly language here has given us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it takes 6 bytes of data in order to add these two numbers together. So now what we want to do is actually see that this does actually work. So what we can do is we can press the debug. So if we press that now, we'll see what happens. And you can see it works through each line of code. So let's look at the very first line here. We're going to have data R0 is equal to 1. So it puts 1 into R0. It then puts 1 into R1, so that puts the value of 1 into R1. It then adds the R0 to R1 and it puts the answer into R1. So it adds these two together, this one and this one, and it puts the value into R1, so it puts the value 2 in here, and then the program ends. So that's quite a simple program. You can also step through it one line at a time, so I could, you could press the step command, in which case it will come up with a little screen here and you can just press one at a time and it will step through the code one line at a time. Also note as well, if you have a program that runs and it's quite a large program, then when you press the debug, you can also press the um, escape key and it'll run through the code quite quickly for you. There's also an option to export the code. So what we want to be able to do is take our machine language here. So that's our machine code. And we want to change the machine code from the binary values here to a hexadecimal and then load it up into a file so that the file can then be used in the actual CPU. So we do that with the export command. So if we press this export button here, it'll give you an option to pick a particular folder. So I would suggest you just pick the folder where you keep your files. So I put, my, I put it in this folder here. So if I control C, and control V. Now whenever I, I press OK in this, it will save the this information here to a file called MySim and it will save it as the hexadecimal equivalent. So the hexadecimal equivalent of this eight bits is going to be there's going to be four bits will be one hex number and another four bits will be another hex number. So we'll press OK in that. Now let's go in and we'll have a look at the actual file that is exported. So this is a file here, it's called MySim. So if we double click that, you see it's just a simple text file. And you can see that the values here that have been exported are, it's quite small, but I think you could probably see that it's 20, 1, 21, uh, 1, 81 and CF. So this here is our hexadecimal equivalent of the output here. One thing to note here is that we have built a simulator. So this simulates the CPU. 
it's only an approximation to the CPU. It doesn't contain within it every single state that the CPU goes into via every single clock pulse. If it were to do that, we would then call this an emulator, in which case it would be emulating the hardware. But that isn't what we've got here. This is a simulator and it's only an approximation. But it's good, a good enough approximation to allow us to write the actual assembly language code and to export it and to get it to actually run on the CPU. So we can be reasonably sure that this, the code that we write here will actually, actually run on our CPU. So the simulator takes a snapshot of the CPU at the end of each instruction. So this first line of instruction here, the output at the registers and the flags should be these values here. At the end of the second instruction, the output should be these values here, and so on and so forth. So in the next video, we will load up the CPU with this program and we'll follow through the CPU and check and make sure that the registers and the flags do actually hold the values that we expect here. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.